Hello, everyone. My name is Jonathan Broadbent. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about uh, cell type deconvolution with low pass nanopore sequencing. So, just a brief outline of what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to first do some background on liquid biopsies, methylation assays, and the current state of the art for deconvolution. Then, I'm going to introduce the two models we made and some results. So, the motivation for this project was can early cancer screening via liquid biopsy. And liquid biopsy is simply referring to doing a blood draw as opposed to a tumor biopsy. And the driving factor of why this works is because tumors shed DNA into the blood and quite early on during tumor genesis. And basically what you get is cell-free DNA circulating in the blood and it gives you a really good snapshot of the tumor in real time. The only problem is that the circulating tumor DNA in the blood isn't the only DNA in the blood. You also get a lot of DNA from blood cells. So the real challenge is to identify which fragments of DNA are coming from blood cells and which are coming from cancerous tissues. And there's a lot of genomic signals that can be utilized to do this, but the one that is most common to use is methylation markers. And there's quite a few ways to determine methylation. However, in our work, we're using nanopore because it's a native way and it's a point of care, can be implemented quite easily in point of care situations. And what we wanna do is we wanna trace the tissue of origin for our cell-free DNA. Because if we're able to trace the tissue of origin and we figure out if there's cell-free DNA coming from any tissue that's not a blood cell, then it's likely that that, can, that tissue is cancerous. So nanopore sequencing is basically a method that passes a single strand of DNA through a membrane protein that measures an electric current. Since each DNA base has a distinct electrical charge, we can infer the DNA sequence by its, and its respective modifications. So why nanopore? Well, first of all, it's very highly equivalent to the gold standard by sulfite sequencing. It's simple and easy to set up. It finds long reads, which is becoming more prevalent in cell-free DNA. And there's a very low setup cost. The biggest challenge with nanopore is that there's a high error rate, and that's what we're gonna address in this talk right now. So we built a pipeline for doing cell type deconvolution of nanopore sequencing. Following a blood draw, we extract the DNA, you sequence on your little min ion, and you call methylation using nanopolish. Then you run your deconvolution algorithm and you get a mixture proportion. That looks something like this. And if you see any portion of DNA coming from nephthial tissue, there's likely gonna be cancer in that tissue. So let's take a look at the current state of the art deconvolution. This is non-negative least squares deconvolution, NNLS. And there's basically three components. You have your sample methylon, which is basically going to be a collection of methylation frequencies at all the GMRs you're interested in looking at. Then you also have your methylation atlas, which is going to be an n times k matrix of basically k sample methylones for purified cell types. So these are going to be um, highly resolved methylones of uh, cell types where each column is going to be hypomethylated in the defining genes of that cell. So we use a methylation atlas from array data collected by Yuval Dor's group at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. And then we also finally have, we have, we have our mixture pr prediction vector, um, sigma, which is going to be our parameter of interest. It's unobserved and inferred during optimization. And this all works by a little bit of uh, matrix multiplication. So if you took the first row of your atlas, multiplied and take the dot product with your mixture proportion vector, you should get the methylation frequency at the first uh, element in your sample methylone. And this all works quite well at high coverage, especially for array uh, arrayed, uh, methylation assays, which um, give you a precise beta value by performing amplification of your molecules. However, the problem is that when you do CFDNA, you have very low coverage. And nanopore is a single molecule sequencing technology. So what we usually do is we find the number of reads uh, in a certain position, find the number of methylated reads, and estimate x by m divided by t. However, this fails when you have an uneven distribution of coverage across the genome. So you might have one call in one area or 10 calls in another area. So we wanted to design a model that pays attention to this uneven noise distribution. So what we came up with, with a log likelihood method, we call it LLSP for log likelihood, assuming that sequencing is perfect. So these are kind of like the main facets of NNLS deconvolution, and I'm gonna convert them into our log likelihood method. So first, instead of doing X equals M over T, we're gonna 
sample M from a binomial distribution parameterized on T and Z. So if you look at our uh, diagram here, we might we'll have a heterogeneous mix mixture and we have these sequencing reads. And for each region, we're gonna create these vectors M and T. And then our success parameter of our, bi of our binomial is going to be a linear combination of our purified cell types based on weighted by our mixture proportion. So if we have a mixture proportion starting out as uh, an even distribution, you'll get an even combination of these two um, cell types, which right here would be lung cells and monocytes. And then we're, instead of uh, minimizing the difference between the expected methylome and the observed methylome, what we're gonna do is maximize the likelihood of this whole equation. So the advantage of also using a log likelihood method is that we can introduce a lot of new variables to it. And one of which is gonna be our error model. So what we found is, is that nanopore has an error rate about 5%. However, this error rate is asymmetric. So we get these four different types of errors. Uh, we're gonna focus on the first row just because we're modeling observed when methylation is observed. And um, basically what we do here is that we take a combination of the, when we correctly call methylation and when we miscall methylation. So for example, if you were to have a methylation, a true methylation probability of 100%, but you were probably to correctly call a methylation is 0.95, then your estimation of your true, of your observed methylation would be 0.95. And using this, our, uh, our model stays the same, except our banal binomial success parameter becomes our prediction of the observed methylation. So this is what our uh, deconvolution results looks like. Um, when first we started using our NNLS deconvolution, we um, worked on some uh, leukemia bulk data from Mark Minden's group at the UHN. And here we expect most of the samples to be assigned to blood cell types. And we see that for 80 to 90% of the samples we're getting blood cells. And especially in our T cell populations here, they're being assigned almost completely to CD4 and CD8 T cells. However, the only problem here is that we don't have an, a definitive ground truth of what these samples should look like. So instead, what we opted to do to compare these models was make a simulation that's going to basically create complex mixtures using all the distributions that I described before. So how this works is that we use these distributions to generate a 70-30 monocyte lung meth methylome. We deconvolute these mixtures to predict sigma and compare the predicted lung cells to our actual. This ge data generation gives us some flexibility to create some interesting data sets. Here, we are measuring how these models respond to increasing error in our nanopore sequencing. So on the x-axis here, I have an increasing miscall rate. And on the y-axis, we have a, uh, the predicted lung proportion. And as you can see that the LLSP and the NNLS model both decrease in accuracy as the miscall rate increases, but the LLSC model stays relatively the same. And this is sequencing at high coverage. However, when we also simulate this uh, mixture at 0.5x, we still see that the LSC model maintains quite a high accuracy. So while we were working on this project, um, the group we were working with in Israel released a larger methylation atlas built on bisulfite sequencing data. Now, since bisulfite sequencing data is a lot more similar to nanopore methylation data, we wanted to adjust our model to be able to use this data. And additionally, we found that uh, they include a lot more DMRs, CPGs, in their methylation um, atlas. Basically, we're moving towards an atlas that's using large regions instead of single CPG sites. Now, this is useful because it provides much more distinguishing regions between cell types. But the only problem here is that the LSC model can't really differentiate between methylation calls on the same region and on different reads. So what we do is we design another model. We call it Mixture Model with Sequencing Errors, MMSE. And instead of counting the number of reads methylated at a certain CPG, we do the opposite. We count the number of CPGs methylated on a read. So we denote gamma, the responsibility, of fragment I being assigned to cell type K. And then using our latent sigma, we can softly assign each read to one of these uh, cell types. And using these soft assignments, we can recompute what 
uh, our sig prediction of sigma is using this LM MLE, which is just going to be the number of reads assigned to each cell type divided by the total number of reads. And using this expectation maximization optimization technique, we can keep on recomputing sigma, assigning reads until we converge to a likely solution. We run this simulation on a cross product of our nanopore errors. And the x axis here is the missed call rate, and the y axis is the correct call rate. And the experiment here is using the first atlas I described with just single regions. And we can see that deconvolution accuracy decreases with increasing error on both these two bottom facets, uh, LSP and NNLS. And we also see that in this single site atlas, the LSC model performs better than the MMSC model. However, if we move to the larger region atlas that I showed earlier, earlier um, we see that the MMSC model outperforms all the others very greatly, especially at 0.1x. So just some uh, conclusions on what I went through today is that we constructed a pipeline for cell type deconvolution with nanopore sequencing. Uh, we designed two models, one for using it with uh, array data, one for using bisulfite data. And the error modeling greatly improves our resilience to missed calls. Uh, our next steps with this project is we want to determine accuracy against the experimental ground truth. What we're going to do here is we want to try and use MNA's digestion to simulate CFDNA on lung cells and PBMCs, computationally mix them, and then evaluate these models. I'd like to thank very much everyone in my lab, our collaborators, and the funding who supported me.